the goose girl there was once a queen who had a beautiful daughter who was dearer than all the world to her the girl had hair of gold and eyes that were as blue as a summer sea everybody liked the princess because she was always happy and cheerful and always kind to those she met however there was someone who did not like the princess and that was her maid the maid was terribly jealous of her mistress she was jealous of the beautiful clothes the princess wore and of the royal horse from the royal stables that she went out riding on but what she most envied the princess for was that she never had to do anything everything was done for the princess absolutely everything when the princess rose in the morning it was her maid who filled her bath and perfumed the water it was the maid who laid out the princess's clothes ready for her and sewed on any buttons that had come off every morning she combed the princess's tresses of gold and when her hair shone like the rays of the sun it was the maid who set the coronet on her mistress's head if only i were a princess the maid thought then i wouldn't have to go on doing all this work one day the queen decided that it was time to look for a husband for the princess this was not at all easy for the queen thought that even the best of young men could not be good enough for her lovely daughter she sent for a princess from all countries near and far to come to the court but one prince would be too old another too fat and a third not really handsome enough but at last she heard of a prince in a far off land who she thought was a suitable young man for her daughter to marry and she began to make the arrangements with the prince's father the day of the wedding was fixed and then the queen sent for her daughter to tell her the news the queen could not help feeling rather sad she would miss her dear daughter greatly when she had gone since the old king had died the two of them had become especially dear to each other i have chosen a good husband for you the queen told the princess He is the son of a mighty king and he lives a long way from here. The princess nodded. She had already guessed what was to happen because in the last few days dozens of trunks had been packed with her trousseau and all her gold and jewels. She had also had to try on a lot of new dresses which she found very boring but now everything was ready she was going to make a long journey and soon after that she was going to be a bride that night the princess was so excited that she could hardly sleep the next day the princess said goodbye to her mother I have had my best horse saddled for you," said the queen. "He is called Falada, and he will take you to the far country where the prince lives. He is a very special horse. I have also ordered your maid to travel with you for company, and there is a horse ready for her too. Finally, I want to give you this handkerchief." You must always keep it on you for it can help you if you are ever in trouble. 
the evening before, the queen had cut her finger so as to let three drops of her blood fall onto the silk handkerchief. Now, as she gave it to her daughter, she warned her once again. Remember, don't lose it. Then they parted. The princess set out on the long journey in cheerful spirits. The weather was fine and she was delighted by everything she saw. The flowers, the birds, the butterflies, the rabbits. For the princess was very fond of all living creatures. The maid rode ahead of the princess and every now and then she turned and looked back with a discontented expression on her face. If I could wear those beautiful clothes that the princess has, then I would look much prettier than she does. The girl thought to herself, and then there's her horse. I hate to see her riding on such a fine animal while I have to make do with this old neck. But I shall think of something. Just give me the chance and then we shall see. The princess had no idea that her maid was hatching evil plans. She was hot now from riding and she wanted something to drink. So, in a friendly tone, Oh, voice, she asked the maid. Would you please fill my gold cup with water from that stream over there? I'm so thirsty. Fill it yourself, the maid answered rudely and spitefully. I'm not working my fingers to the bone for you anymore. Whatever next? The astonished princess thought to herself. But then she shrugged her shoulders. I expect she did not sleep very well last night. I'll get the water myself. When she went to mount her horse, Palada again, the animal said, Your good heart is tender and dear, but wicked and wily, your maid. But to me the future is clear. They'll all come to nothing. The terrible plans she has laid. Have no fear, Falada, said the princess. So long as I have the handkerchief my mother gave me, the maid can do me no harm. The princess mounted the horse and rode on, quite carefree again. She soon forgot what had happened with the maid. About the middle of the day, the princess was thirsty again. Without thinking, she once again asked the maid, Would you please fetch me a cup of water? I've told you once already that I'm not going to go on working my fingers to the bone for the likes of you. Without saying a word, the princess got down from her horse and ran to the stream. She bent over the water and she dropped the handkerchief her mother had given her and it quickly floated away down the stream. The princess had not noticed her loss, but the maid had. Just you wait a minute, she said when the princess was about to mount her horse again. Take those clothes off. I want to wear them. Only then did the princess discover that she had lost the handkerchief and now she was powerless. That's better, said the maid when she had put on the princess's fine clothes. Now I'm going to take Falada and you can ride my horse. But when he heard this, Falada began to buck and rear, kicking out with his hooves so that the maid had to keep riding her old horse after all. When they reached the country where the prince lived and had arrived at the royal court, the wicked maid acted as if she was the princess. 
The prince kissed her hand courteously, but he was very disappointed. He had hoped that his bride would be prettier than this girl in front of him. Could this be the lovely princess of whom his father had told him? The prince thought she looked very discontented and disagreeable. And tell me, who is that? He asked, pointing to the real princess. Oh, that's my maid, said the maid. I brought her with me to keep me company, but she annoys me now. I don't want her near me any more. Let her go and work in the kitchens or the stables. The prince looked at the fine, delicate hands of the real princess and said, she certainly won't do for that kind of work. She would do better looking after the geese. So the princess had to take the geese to the meadow with a rude boy called Kurt for company. I don't understand why you have to come with me, said the boy. I can tend the geese quite all right by myself. And you don't look as if you have ever been a goose girl before. The princess did not answer. She was thinking of how her maid would be sitting next to the prince at the banquet. The next day, when she was walking with the geese past the royal stables, she heard her maid saying to the prince, That horse should be put down and the maid was pointing to Falada. Why? asked the prince in astonishment. Because he is a bad horse, wild and headstrong, and no one can really manage him, answered the maid. Very well, then he will be sent for slaughter, the prince said. Naturally, the real princess was filled with sorrow when she heard that Falada was going to be killed. If only I could go to the prince and tell him that I am the real princess, she thought. But she dared not do this, for she was afraid he would not believe her. And in any case, the maid had already threatened that she would have her put to death if she said anything. No, she could do nothing to save her horse. However, she would go to the slaughterhouse and ask for Falada's head to be put over the palace gates. That evening, when the princess came home from the meadow, she saw the head of her horse over the gateway. She said, Oh, why have they done this to us? And what will happen next? And the horse's head answered, Tender and dear is your good heart, princess. Wicked and wily princess is your maid. Let's hope that the plans she has cunningly laid will soon be made plain and have no more success. Kurt, who was walking behind the princess, listened in astonishment to all this. What a strange girl this was! She talked to a horse's head, and a horse's head answered. It gave him the shivers. The next morning, exactly the same thing happened. The girl spoke to the horse's head and again the horse's head answered a little later when they were in the meadow with the geese the princess took off her head to comb her hair how Kurt stared and stared that hair looks just like gold he thought he took a step closer but it really is gold. I've never seen anything like this before.
How I would like to have some of that hair. Greedily, he stretched out his hands to pull some out. But the princess already knew what the boy was planning to do. And she immediately thought of a trick. She said, Will you help me, West Wind? Of all the winds the best? Come and help me, West Wind. And drive away this pest. Make him pant and make him puff. Make him clutch the air. For a little while will be enough to let me comb my hair. When she had finished speaking, a gust of wind blew off Kurt's head and dropped it down across the meadow. Kurt rushed off after his head. But just when he was about to grab it, the wind blew it a little further away. By the time Kurt had managed to get hold of his head, the princess had finished combing her hair and she had put her head back on. Kurt was out of breath from so much running. Angrily, he glared at the princess. I'll get even with you tomorrow, he growled. Just you wait. The next day, however, exactly the same thing happened. The princess sat down in the grass to comb her hair. Greedy as ever, Kurt came closer. The princess called to the wind to help her, and the next moment, Kurt was chasing after his hat again. The boy decided it was time to go and tell the king about the extraordinary goose girl who had been taken into his service. With his hat in his hand, he bowed deeply and told the king everything. The king listened carefully, stroking his moustache. What you have just told me is indeed extraordinary, the king said. And now you mention it, I don't think she looks like an ordinary girl either. I shall have to look into the matter. So, the next day, the king stole quietly after the goose girl to the meadow. He heard how she talked to the horse's head. Then he watched and saw how a sudden gust of wind tore off Kurt's head. And he saw too that the girl's hair was of purest gold. The boy is right, the king murmured. This goose girl must be someone quite out of the ordinary. At the end of the day, the king sent for the goose girl. Tell me, girl, said the king in a kindly voice. Who are you? Who are your parents? And where do you come from? The goose girl curtsied low and said, Sire, I would greatly like to answer your questions. But I cannot. It would cost me my life if I did. No living soul must know who I am and where I come from. There were tears in the princess's eyes. I can see that you would dearly like to pour your heart out to someone, said the king. If you cannot tell your story to a living soul, why not tell it to... to the fireplace? You could do that, couldn't you? So, that was what the girl did. She was happy now that she could pour out the whole story, even to the fireplace. She told it that she was the real princess and that the bride who was dancing in the banqueting hall was an imposter. And there was a great deal more she told the fireplace. 
She did not know that the king had gone up to the roof garden where he could put his ear against the chimney and hear everything that the princess was saying down below. When the king had heard everything, he ran quickly downstairs again. He took the real princess by the arm and led her into the banqueting hall. The maid uttered a cry of terror when she saw the real princess coming with the king. She fled from the palace and no one ever saw her again. The prince was overjoyed when he saw his true bride. She was even more beautiful than he had imagined. A magnificent feast was held that evening. Huge dishes loaded with delicious food were brought in. And after sending their happy news to the princess's mother, the bridal pair danced long into the night. The End <laughs>